The search for a submersible that disappeared while taking wealthy tourists to see the wreck of the Titanic has gripped many with its grim cinematic elements. A ticking clock, passengers running out of oxygen, and of course the iconic ocean liner itself, which still captivates the public's imagination more than a century after it sank. But the submarine disappeared in a remote area of the North Atlantic Ocean on Sunday. The sub was supposed to send out a ping every 15 minutes during its descent down to the Titanic shipwreck. And the entire voyage was supposed to take just about two and a half hours. But contact with the Titan was lost approximately an hour 45 minutes into the trip. By the way, newly uncovered allegations suggest there had been significant warnings made about the vessel's safety during the submersible's development. But there are five people on board the Titan submersible, including Stockton Rush, the 61-year-old pilot and the founder of Ocean Gate Expeditions. Others on board include billionaire British explorer, a British Pakistani tycoon and his teenage son. And according to some estimates, they could all be running out of oxygen today. This is if they're even still alive. But how exactly does this sub work? Well, the Titan is not a big submersible, nor is it designed for extended periods of time underwater or capable to travel to a port without help from another vessel, as naval submarines are. Because it travels so deep in the ocean, the submersible cannot use GPS and communicates through a text messaging system. It's piloted with a video game controller, which is not as weird as it sounds. Even the U.S. Navy uses Xbox controllers to operate the photonic scopes that replaced periscopes on submarines. But critically, the Titan submersible only has about 96 hours of oxygen reserves on board. That means that as soon as the vessel went missing, the clock started ticking on remaining life support. Even if the sub were able to resurface on its own, the passengers would be stuck inside until help arrived since the hatch is closed from the outside and sealed shut with about 17 bolts. As far as the search and rescue ops are concerned, Ocean Gate contacted the Coast Guard after it lost touch with the Titan on Sunday afternoon. This kicked off what has become an international rescue effort on the water and in the air with US, Canadian and French authorities involved as we've been covering. But why exactly is it so difficult to explore the deepest parts of the ocean? You're probably familiar with how 70% of the Earth's surface is ocean, but its depths are a much bigger mystery. As per official reports, less than 10% of the world's ocean depths are mapped with sonar. So while we know where the oceans are and their surface is mapped with satellites, the depths are still just about roughly estimated. In fact, some experts say we have a better understanding of Mars geography than we do of the oceans. To identify objects in the very deep parts of the ocean, researchers are left to use sound waves, which can travel through water much more accurately via sonar. As for the rescue, the Ocean Gate submersible only has sonar to rely on, and that's if that technology is still working. Several P3 flights are, have heard the noises um, as yesterday, and we put uh, assets there. Uh, we, we relocated assets immediately. Um, with respect to uh, food and water, it's my understanding there are some limited rations. I, I can't tell you exactly how much um, they have aboard, but they do have some limited rations aboard. We need to have hope, right? But, but I, don't, I can't tell you what the noises are. But what I can tell you is, and I think this is the most important point, we're searching where the noises are, and that's all we can do at this point.